Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. Today we're gonna to be reading your worst books of 2023. In my last video, I read your guys' best books of 2023, and now we're doing the opposite. I hope you're not sick of 2023 content. This is the last one I have, at least for now. So, if you don't know what I did, starting back in October, I created some Google surveys, and you guys submitted to me your best and worst books that you read in the whole year of 2023. In this video, like I said, we're reading the worst books, the ones that were repeated the most. In the best books video, it was really interesting because the top six books that were recommended on the best category, I had already read but in this category in the worst that's really not the case so let's get into the tbr i took all of the submissions from that google survey that i told you about exported them to a google sheet put it by alphabetical order and took tallies on which books repeated the most interestingly enough the top book that was mentioned in the worst books list was also the top book mentioned in the best books list and that was fourth wing by rebecca yaros and we all know that i've already read that book so then i looked at the second most repeated and that one was iron flame by rebecca <laughs> Seems like her readers are very hot or cold. <laughs> so now we will go to the third, fourth, and fifth most mentioned books because I'm going to try to read all three of these, okay? The next book was repeated five times for worst book of 2023. And that is House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Next mentioned four times was one that I have never even heard of and it was You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. Both of these are thrillers so far and I was going to choose just one or the other but the second one, the You Shouldn't Have come here is so short that I feel like I could squeeze it in. So we're going to try to do that. Now going to the next category of books that were mentioned three times, there were two different books that were repeated three times. And for the final spot of this vlog, I wanted to let my patrons decide for me. So the two books that were mentioned three times each that they got to choose between was Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano or Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood. And the book that won in that poll is actually Finlay Donovan is Killing It. So this will be the third book of the vlog. Before the this begins, I'm a little bit nervous, but mostly optimistic because I have heard a lot of negative things about House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, but I have also heard that it's mostly like the final twist is what makes people go on either loving it or hating it. And I have actually been told that people think I might like it. I don't know what that says. I don't know what that means, but because of that, I'm going into it pretty optimistic. All right, we're going to go into all of these with open minds, but I am a little more apprehensive about You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. The premise of that one just sounds odd. <laughs> And we'll get into that when it's that book's time to shine. Um, Finlay Donovan is killing it. I've heard really great things about this book. So I'm, I was actually really surprised to see it. Funnily enough, I have also been told that I would probably like this book as well. So I don't know what any of this says about me, <laughs> but this is like a little cozy mystery. So um, this is predominantly like a mystery reading vlog, which is interesting, but we're gonna run with it. And the first thing that we have to decide is which one I will be reading first. So I'll see you in the next clip when I have decided and have started the first book of this video. Okay, I've chosen to pick up House Across the Lake by Riley Sager first. I thought I owned this book, but apparently I don't. But thank God for Libby because they had it available to rent on Kindle as well as the audiobook. Both were available immediately, so <laughs> I can't complain. Love this. We have gotten to 18% of the book, so I have a general grasp of what's going on. I'm glad that I started with this one because I feel like I could really like it and I'm a little less sure about the Geneva Rose book and then I think that I could really like Finlay Donovan, so I'm gonna save that one for last, I think. I'm trying to sand I'm trying to sandwich the one that I'm really unsure about. So House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. If you know me, Mr. Sager and I have a sordid past. I did not like Home Before Dark, but I really, really loved The Only One Left. You know, the one with the Rocky Cliff cover. So I'm one to one with him. This one will tip the scale in either direction. And it is following our main character, Casey Fletcher. I believe she's 35 years old. She's recently widowed and kind of having like a rough go at it. She's been drinking heavily. She got fired from her last performance performance because her and her mother are both like famous Broadway actresses and also I think in film as well. So her drinking got bad enough to where her mother has sent her to their like lake house, which is where this story is taking place, the house across the lake, right? But it's kind of messed up <laughs> because this lake house and this lake is the place that she lost her husband at. So now it's like a year later or almost a year and now she's being sent here by her mother for like a rehab sort of like a detox. But like oh, that... <laughs> 
being in the place where your husband died, like that is going to drive anyone to drink, in my opinion. But don't worry, we have a trusty neighbor who's bringing her alcohol anyways. And so our narrator is pretty unreliable because she is drinking pretty much all the time. But the plot of the story is that she has this really high tech pair of binoculars that her husband had left behind. And she's able to see into the house across the lake. And the couple that lives in this house that she's like spying on basically is Tom and Catherine. Tom's a tech innovator and Catherine is a supermodel. And one day Casey saves Catherine from drowning actually in the middle of the lake and they start to become closer. But from what I'm gathering so far, right, the closer that they're getting and the more that Casey is spying on them through their own windows, there's way more than meets the eye. I think what's going to happen is that Casey is going to see something that she shouldn't have or something like that because the chapter that the book opens up with is sort of like a foreshadowing thing. Oh, it was a really good opening chapter. I really have to say that because I was surprised like three different times already. <laughs> There's still time for it to change. Like, don't get me wrong. But the first chapter, it was really interesting. It opened up with, hello? Yes, I've been filming a clip. No, it's okay. Are you waiting in line? Would you like me to stay on the phone with you so you feel more comfortable? <laughs> Would you like to say hi to the vlog? Yeah, let me say hi to the vlog. Okay, tell them hi. Hi. Hi, what's up? Nice. Hold on. Caleb's picking up our pizza order. He was making sure I already tipped. All right. Hi, baby. Okay, hi. What's up? What's up? Yeah, what's going on? I'm looking like I'm doing something really important. Well, you are. We're brokering a business deal, and I yeah. I need you to I need you to get back I, to the I can't accept less than 50000 Shut <laughs> Man, I wish we were making deals like that. <laughs> no, you get him on the line. Hey, stop shouting. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Caleb... <laughs> Caleb, <laughs> that was too loud. Yeah, probably. Are you in the, like inside? You're not even like outside. Yeah, in, oh. No, I was in the middle of the dining room. Caleb. <laughs> it's in the middle of the dining room. I want everybody to know. <laughs> Stop shouting. I won't stand less for 50K. Caleb, Caleb that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're embarrassing me. I'm just kidding. I'm out by my truck. Oh, you I might get robbed now. Yeah, for real. What did they say? Do you have your? Do you have the pizza? I have the pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, drive safe. All right, love you. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. That man. <laughs> um, I don't remember where I was in this update now, but basically so far I am enjoying it. I'm having a good time. I will say this narrator um, sounds like a really older woman, which is fine. I don't mind listening to an older woman speak, but if our main character is 35, unless she smokes like two packs of cigarettes a day, I don't think she would sound like this. <laughs> So that was surprising to hear that our main character was only 35, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so far I'm really interested. The opening chapter had Tom, the guy that lives across the lake missing, like he's currently missing, but then, you know, there's already a plot twist in the first chapter <laughs> and we find out where he is, but we also find out that Catherine is missing as well. So there's immediately a lot of intrigue for me because then the next chapter, you know, it was like back in time, you know, now we're gonna watch it catch up to that first foreshadowing bit. I'm hopeful, I know I like Riley Sager's writing. So as long as his plot twists and, you know, other stuff isn't dumb, then I think we could be in for a good read. Fingers crossed. <laughs> House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. It's 62 degrees out here. It is so freaking nice. I have Avi out on her really long leash. We're having a great time in the sun. And I have quite the list of things to say for this book. <laughs> so let's start from the top. Okay, first and foremost, feel free to correct me, but I feel like Riley Sager's books are some of the most like controversial or like hotly debated <laughs> thrillers in the thriller category. And it might be because he's like one of the most famous, so his reader base is insanely large. So people are bound to disagree with each other. But I do feel like his books are some of the most that have like the greatest number of divides. And this book is no different. The people who really love this book really love it. I feel like the people that hate it really hate it. And I've been told in the past that if you liked Home Before Dark, but 
but kind of wished that he did more with the themes and elements within that story than you might really like this book, House Across the Lake. And I genuinely don't know why I never like added two and two together on like what that would mean, but now that I've read it, it makes complete sense. <laughs> and I feel like that statement couldn't be any more true. Like all the themes and tropes that he used in this story, he just 100% committed to. Which I'm being ambiguous on purpose because I feel like some of the things that go on within the story are supposed to be like exciting plot twists or revelations because the way that this book is advertised and pitched is not what I think you're supposed to know going into it. Not entirely at least. So I'm doing this on purpose. But when these twists started happening, I really wasn't expecting it and I was kind of on the fence about where the story was about to take a turn. <laughs> I just didn't know if it was working for me or not and I'm still not in love with every aspect of the story. But by the end of the book, don't hate me. I kind of really liked it. <laughs> I feel like the book and the plotline was actually pretty well-rounded. It was really fun. It was absolutely absurd. And it was really suspenseful. Like there were some scenes that I was actually really stressed out about. I loved the like woman in the window seeing something that she wasn't supposed to see sort of thing. I was having so much fun theorizing on all of the characters who was and was not involved with the situation at hand because I do think that Sager did a really good job at making every single person in the story seem suspicious in some way or another. Like every character did have a purpose and did seem like they could be involved. Like it could have went so many different ways. I didn't trust a single one person in the story, including our main character, because she is an alcoholic, which made everything from her eyes not entirely trustworthy. Ultimately, I do think that this is a pretty good book, but I think that you also have to like these types of twists. This is one book that I 100% understand and can see all of the critiques that are out there. In a really good discussion, like Kayla hosted in her Literally Dead book club, like they had a really good discussion because Elias and Nakia, like, actually really hated it but Kayla really liked it and it was really fun to watch that discussion and I found myself like being swayed both ways because everyone has good points like I again really understand why people don't like this story but at the end of the day it had a lot of themes and elements that I really like saying all this I do want to say some of the things that like I didn't like about this book because it wasn't all like rainbows and sunshine for me I mentioned that I really liked that he committed to the themes and tropes that he used in this book but at the exact same time there is something there's something about the last half of the book that that just bothers me in the back of my head and I can't pinpoint why. I couldn't tell you exactly. Maybe it's because there's no like clear cut answer or rationale as to why or how things played out doesn't entirely make sense to me, but there is something. There's something about the last half of the book that makes me pause anytime I think about how to rate this book. That in conjunction with these other few little things that just bothered me. Like our main character, she's an alcoholic and it is talked about that she's an alcoholic. And I was expecting a little bit more like of a fuzzy sort of main point of view. Like, I feel like she was way too clear-headed for the level of alcoholic that she portrayed herself to be. I also think that the romance subplot was completely unnecessary and added nothing to the story for me. Like, at the end, sure, it, like, maybe made me a little bit happy, but during the actual story, like, especially when he leaned over when they were eating ice cream and, like, took it off of her lip and was like, there, I got it. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> but I think ultimately that just not knowing or not understanding completely is what bothers me. But I also think that that is normal in a book with these types of themes and twists. So you can see why I'm just struggling. Ultimately, I think my rating is a four, but depending on what aspect of the book that I'm thinking about, it could range from a three and a half to a four. And that being said, for this book chosen for worst book, like this is the most repeated book on this list. I would disagree, but I also could understand this book being on this list. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now that being said, we have moved on into the next book on this list, which is You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. I started this this morning as soon as I finished compiling all my thoughts for House Across the Lake because that took me a hot freaking minute. I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to compile all of those thoughts, but I hope it made sense. Once I felt better about my homeostasis within my mind and soul, I started this book, You Should Not Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. This one I had never heard of before I seen it on this list, so I was really surprised that it was repeated four different times. This book's synopsis is probably one of the most wild ones that I've read in a while because it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> the plot is that our main character, whose name is Grace, and you'll hear it a million times coming from the male's point of view, <laughs> whose name is Calvin. Grace has booked this Airbnb in the middle of Virginia, Wyoming. Where is it? In the middle of Wyoming. I'm sorry, there's always sirens around my house. Okay, maybe this was a poor choice in locale to film, but we're gonna work through it. But Calvin's house is listed as an Airbnb and Grace every year will throw a dart 
on a map and she will go vacation in the place that the dart hits. So she lands on this random place in the middle of Wyoming. I don't remember the exact town, but I don't think it's that important. But here's the thing. Normally when you rent an Airbnb, the owner of the house isn't there or they're at least living in like the guest house on the property, something else, I don't know. But not in this case because Grace, who was an overworked New Yorker is going to this Airbnb. And when she gets there, she finds out that there's no Wi-Fi, there's no cell phone service, there's literally nothing. She's in the middle of nowhere and Calvin is still living in the house, which she doesn't think is weird. That's not weird to anyone except me, apparently, within this reading experience so far. And now she's just having a vacation at this Airbnb and Grace and Calvin are falling for each other in a very like quick, obsessive manner. It doesn't track, doesn't really make sense to me at all. Within his point of view, because we get both of them, she is not like other girls and he says it all the time. There's something about her, right? <laughs> and his dialogue is written like, it's, it's making me laugh out loud because it's so overtly aggressive and insinuated that he is a killer and just a psychopath. Like he'll say things like there are too many predators out here or there's a broken window in the room that she's staying in and he goes, oh yeah, some of my guests aren't the best, but don't worry, they pay for it. And then this last one, oh my God, I have to read it to you because I about lost my mind, okay? They were talking about onions, okay? He was comparing her to an onion because other girls are like turnips. Sure, they're pretty, but what you saw is what you got and they were mostly forgettable. Grace is like an onion, layered complex and so much to offer. Onions could be eaten raw. They could take a dish to a whole new level with all of the flavor they packed. They were unassuming, but also surprising, just like Grace. I'd even use them as an insect repellent in a pinch, sliced them open and rubbed them all over my skin. Sir, <laughs> I need you to stop. I need someone to stop you. Like. I don't hate it. I hate that I don't hate it. <laughs> like, okay, so far the book is so absurd, okay? Cause like so far everything is written, I don't know if I wanna say obviously, but it seems like it's going to be like a very obvious, straightforward sort of like suspense thriller with a romance subplot. That's how it's feeling and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that like I'm not hating it, but I also like don't like it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so we'll really have to see how it goes. I plan on finishing this book today. Um, I'm gonna sit here for a couple hours and just read. Avi's laying down. I have an iced coffee. When Caleb gets home from work, I think we're gonna go play tennis because it's so nice out and I plan on reading more later. But we're gonna get this one done. Um, I'm kind of excited to keep going, but in a really weird way. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. I read it in one sitting. Usually that's a really good sign. <laughs> this book is a hot mess. <laughs> oh my God, okay. This book is a mixture of You, the one with Joe Goldberg, and like Misery by Stephen King. Those were the vibes. Those were the vibes that I got. Oh my God, like where do I even start? The storyline was one of the most absurd things I think I've read in a very long time. Truly the setup is one of the main things that I just could not handle. <laughs> The fact that she rented this Airbnb in the middle of nowhere, which in hindsight makes more sense because of the final plot twists at the very end, but that's not what we're talking about. I just couldn't handle how she got this Airbnb in the middle of nowhere and then she just like inserted herself into this man's life and he forced her into his life. And it was like so normal, like it was his birthday and he had a birthday party cookout and like everyone from the small town was there and so was she and it was just chaotic and dramatic and awful. <laughs> So many weird situations like that where I was like, this shouldn't even be a thing. It had like a small town vibe, but only make it insanely unsettling, dramatic, and creepy because they're all keeping secrets and the whole entire cast in this book was just so chaotic. Aside from that, the whole plot was just insufferably predictable as well. Not one twist surprised me. I feel like there were so many little breadcrumbs that, you know, you could figure it out if you're paying attention, except for how dark things got towards the end, especially with like the trophies, if you know you know. There was, of course, a locked basement door that held, you know, the answers to all of the questions that the main character had. There was gaslighting. There was a misunderstood oaf character, a creepy old man, a crazy old lady. Like, it was just truly bizarre. It had a lot of those, like, classic cliches, and it just felt entirely unbelievable. All of it. All of it together. But I thought... <laughs> But I thought it was so funny <laughs> because I didn't like it, but I still ate it up. <laughs> I don't, 
I don't know. I hated the romance. I thought every ounce of that was awful. That's so harsh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I just... I just did not like it. But since I ate it up, like I said, I, I'm gonna give it a two because I don't think that it was the worst thing ever. But I also just don't think it was great. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I'm really glad that I read this. I almost omitted this one from this video just because I wasn't sure if I was going to have time, but I read it in under four hours because it actually ended up being pretty short. And uh, I understand this one being on the list. I do, I get it. Wow. What a bizarre book. In other news, we're gonna go into the last book of this vlog. <laughs> I'm, re I'm really hoping we can end with a better one. I'm hoping that I saved this one for last for, for a reason. And that's going to be Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. <laughs> the little tagline cracks me up. It says, most moms are ready to kill someone by 8.30 a.m. on any given morning. <laughs> This has been pitched to me as a cozy mystery, so I don't know exactly how true that is, but we're going into it with that sort of mindset. So I'm not expecting some like fast paced thriller, but I am expecting to be entertained. And that's, I think the bare minimum. <laughs> so we're going to start this today. Um, I'm excited. I think that it's been a long time coming. And wow, Caleb just got home. So we're gonna maybe go play tennis as well. Wow, what a time to be alive. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> like me, thought that we were going to end this vlog on a high note, then we both are sorely disappointed. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, when I'm reading a book for a vlog, I will come update you with like a synopsis, initial thoughts, feelings, things like that before the final review of the book. But I just had nothing to say. <laughs> Listen. This was so boring. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the thing is, is I feel like I set myself up for success with this book. I had reasonable expectations. I knew what I was about to get into. And ultimately I do feel like the book turned out to be exactly what I thought it would be. And I just didn't like it. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I just, <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I knew going into this that I would have to have some sort of like suspension of disbelief and I was fully prepared to just be along for the ride, but I did not want to be on this ride. <laughs> I didn't care about any of the characters. I felt like things came way too convenient for the main character. And like the plot was doing too much with all of the like mystery, romance, like all of the different things. It was doing too much, but also not enough because I was just bored to tears. I think I would have DNF'd this book if it wasn't for a vlog. But the thing is, is I don't think that it's a bad book. I don't think it was poorly written. And there were some lines that I thought were pretty witty and funny. I also know that a lot of people really love this book. I went to Goodreads after I finished it because I was like, surely other reviewers can help me figure out what to say about this book. And I, no one could help me because everyone loved this book on Goodreads. <laughs> the vast majority of people love this book. So in hindsight, I'm really surprised that this book is on this list because obviously there are also people that don't like it and think that it's their worst book of 2020. 23 or one of them at least. So I think that whoever submitted this book for this video are my people. <laughs> Ultimately, this book just wasn't for me. The only time that I was interested was the literal last few lines of the entire book in the epilogue, which was a massive cliffhanger going into the next book in the series. But I guess I'll never know because I will not be continuing. So that sucks. <laughs> For my rating, I think I'm hovering between a two and a half and a three. Because again, I don't think that it was bad. I just don't think that I was the person who's meant to read this book, if that even makes sense. I just didn't like it. It reminded me of the show, is it Good Girls? Like to a T. That those were the vibes. And I did like that show, but I don't know, man. <laughs> this just wasn't for me and that's okay. I'm glad I read it though, because it's been on my shelf for quite a while. But that being said, the vlog is over friends. Thank you so much for participating, especially if you submitted any of these titles for me to read. Let me know if that was you. If you also hated these books, I would love to know. Or didn't hate these books because actually I did end up liking House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. So I guess you just win some and you lose some. If you are still watching and you don't know what else to say, then leave me the ghost emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye! Thank you.